Hi, I'm here to talk about one of the very common problems that many Mini Cooper uh, R56 owners will uh, experience and that is the passenger airbag warning light will come on and that is being triggered by the passenger seat occupancy sensor um, error and if you intend to keep your Mini Cooper for a long period of time mine has about 130,000 miles on it um, that's the issue that you will see and the, I personally believe that there should be a recall and right now there's not a recall for the R56 model yet there is a recall for the convertible model but not the R56 uh, hatchback okay so there are many communities talking about this and and so far people have been doing a workaround to resolve this issue because basically, you know, the it will it will leave a warning airbag fault light on on your dashboard, and also the airbag might or might not deploy uh, when you get into a car accident if there is somebody sitting in a passenger seat, right? And the function, right, of the passenger occupant sensor, it is to determine two things. One is that a passenger sitting in the passenger seat, and number two, what is the weight? Of that passenger okay because if that passenger is weighed under a certain pound the airbag will not deploy right as a safety measure just in case that you do have an infant or a, a child in the front seat because occupant because airbags are dangerous airbags can kill right if you're under a certain amount of weight the airbag could seriously injure you so it is a safety mechanism um, to prevent the airbag from going off if there is a, a, a youngster in the front seat okay now people have been uh, there's no recall to fix this problem right so people have been doing workarounds right so all over the community um, there is people having devices like this okay and that's this is the device that you install inside the passenger seat and that is to do two things one it is to trip the computer uh, to always thinking that there will be a passenger sitting in the passenger seat and number two it is also to fool the computer tricking it that the passenger seat is always buckled um, that way the airbag will deploy every single time and it will also eliminate the airbag light so I personally don't feel that safe so I am currently writing a complaint and filing a report with the National Highway Safety Association uh, with such problem and and in hopes of turning this into a recall because be, be before somebody seriously gets hurt because I I honestly feel if everyone out there is doing this or if they're not doing this it is a matter of time um, before somebody gets seriously injured okay now the next part of this video I'm going to show you how to install um, such device so let me show you what the uh, problem looks like Okay, I'm gonna uh, put the car to uh, activate mode. So that's the light, that will be the airbag warning light. And uh, I'll show it over here. So now you have two indicators. Um, so this light, right, initially, before the problem becomes too severe, you will start to notice that whenever, if the, the passenger will shift back and forth, or if the passenger will move in the seat, this light will sometimes illuminate briefly, but then it will go away. Or this light will sometimes even turn on if the passenger decides to remove the seat belt, right? And put it back in. This light will turn on. Um, if the passenger exits the vehicle, this light will sometimes flash at you, or sometimes it will turn on. And that is the <clears throat> that is a symptom of, of the passenger occupancy sensor that's falling on you. It is whenever if you have a passenger that's moving in the passenger seat, the airbag light will be triggered. That's you know that that sensor, it's um that that error and that warning light, it's being related to the uh, um passenger seat occupancy sensor. Now it's very important to remember this. Once we install the workaround, under no circumstances will we ever put a child in the front seat. Because we know that the, for definitely, definitely 110% that when there's a car accident, the, the airbag 
for the passenger will deploy regardless who and what weight of the passenger is sitting here okay okay so the first step we actually need to do is remove the uh the passenger seat but before we can even remove any of the bolts and stuff let's go ahead and disconnect this um cable connector here and it's a really simple uh, quick release So to remove the passenger seat, you're gonna remove four of the um, T Torx bolt, okay? And um, those are two per railing, one here, one in the back, and same goes for the other one. And um, these are looks like they're T T forty, okay? So you can go ahead and unbolt those. And uh, one thing that I find easiest to do is always uh, increase the height of the seat. Right, so that will give me as much room under the seat as possible. Okay, so we have just removed the four bolts from the passenger seat, so now we can go ahead and remove the entire seat from the car. With the seat removed, our next step is to flip the seat over and start working under the car to install our new passenger seat occupancy bypass device. Here we are looking from the uh, bottom of the seat and the front of the vehicle, uh, the front of the seat is actually that way. Um, we're going to be mainly working on this uh, yellow box and the cables are here. And what you need to do is first is to remove this little um, black zip tie. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and work our way around it until we can chase it all that runs all the way to the seat belt buckle. Let's take a look at what's in the package. I love how it comes in a Ziploc bag. There isn't really a um, user manual, but uh, I'm gonna, we're gonna go by looking at this from a reverse engineering side. Uh, this looks like what we have. It's a uh, a seat belt illuminator. So this goes into the. Uh, you know, this replaces the seatbelt cable and it basically tells the computer the seatbelt has been buckled. And here's the uh, seatbelt occupancy uh, sensor um, bypass device. And there are some switches here. I'm just going to leave them as is. I'm not, I haven't found anywhere online in terms of what those settings are supposed to be. So I'm just going to leave it as default. All right, our next step is to locate a passenger seat occupancy sensor connector it took me a while to find but uh i look at the end of our new connector here and it looks like it's that tab here and all we need to do is just uh unplug it okay and now once that's unplugged <clears throat> all we need to do is insert it with the new one okay with the bypass uh in place i'm going to just neatly tie that with the rest of the uh connections here Okay, now it's looking pretty, and we've connected the new connector. Uh, it's time to install our uh, seatbelt bypass. So now the next step is to remove the uh, uh, seatbelt uh, connector, and uh, to replace this with the um, the dummy here. So basically, this creates a closed circuit for your seatbelt. So in this case. Um, your seatbelt will always be um, buckled according to the computer. There's a little tab on the side over here and what you do is you're going to pull the tab down and then you should be able to slide these uh, modules uh, one by one. Just like that, see? You push the tab upward like that and then uh, all these little tabs will start to uh, slide out one by one. Is the centerpiece that we need. And this is a stage where you might want to take a picture, right? Because of the cable orientation. I have another seatbelt module here, so I can, can take a better look. I have another module up here, 
uh, exact same uh, seatbelt connector, right? So you can actually see it's these two pins you know you want to take out. And remember, it's the black on the left side, red on the right side. And if you push these two pins in, um, it should uh, eject the cable. So I'm go ahead and push that in here. That is one. Still haven't got the other one yet. All right, that's two. Okay, now they're both in, and all we have to do is just slide it back into a place where you know it belongs. And now we can tidy this one up a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna. Okay, so now we're just gonna put it back. Push it back in. And push it back in. That's it, clicks into place. And then we're good, we're gonna zip tie this over here so it doesn't go uh, all over the place. Okay, after we have finished installing the component, our next step is to go ahead and reinstall the seats back inside the car. Well, as last night I was trying to clear out the uh, seat belt light. Um, two issues that came out, okay. One was I was only able to, I was able to clear the uh, seat occupancy sensor uh, warning light, which you see, uh, the little blue light that you can see there, that's the new bypass that installed, right? So after that was installed, I was able to clear the um, the the airbag light, but another light stayed on, uh, which also airbag related, was the uh, <clears throat> seat belt um, patch. Okay, so it seems like the seat belt patch uh, bypass here wasn't working, so I removed it, and what I did instead, I didn't want to just connect the original wire in because that's mean I have to leave the seat belt in there all the time in order for the charm to go away. Uh, I have found <coughs> another. Um, I have found another seat belt patch sensor. Okay, so this piece belongs inside of the uh, seat belt buckle. Okay, and uh, this is a used one. I took it out um, from a spare one I have. And as you can see, it's a very interesting way that they did this with. Um, as you can see here, <coughs> this, that piece I'm pointing at right now, this piece, that is actually a magnet, okay? So, when there's a magnet in place between two wires, it generates a electrical magnetic field, and that's what the computer is detecting. And as you can see over here on the computer, us uh, passenger seat belt right right now is connected watch as I shift that magnet out of place now showing that it is not connected and then as I slide that piece of magnet back into place well <laughs> As I slide that magnet back into place, now the passenger seat belt is telling me that it has been connected. Very interesting way that they were doing this. So my plan it is to slide this magnet to a place where it's detecting connected. Okay, so right now it's not connected. I'm gonna slide it into place where the, the sensor picks up the electrical magnetic field is connected. Good. And I'm gonna use a little piece of um, blue tech to hold that in place, so it always stay connected. Okay, I've slide a piece of um, blue tech. Okay, so now it shall held at the uh, connected position. And now I just gotta find a way to zip tie this whole module under the seat. See as I, yeah, this shouldn't go anywhere. Okay.
and that's my fix to it. I'm going to put some uh, um, electrical tape around this module to protect it. So uh, just in case the blue tech falls off, it will be okay. And okay, now we're going to clear the airbag warning light. Okay. Yes. Lights are clear. <clears throat> and um well folks that is my fix and um thanks for watching.